Andrew Davson, rapporteur of the Monitoring Committee. Your report on the local elections in Turkey and mayoral rerun in Istanbul mm -hmm. has just adopted in the plenary session of the Congress. That's right. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask your own observations, separately talking from the report, when sure. you were in Turkey yes. and observing the elections, because we are talking for both elections, 31st of March and 23rd of June, yes, or the correct. rerun of the Istanbul. Yes. Well, for me, it was an absolutely wonderful experience. Uh, Turkey is such a wonderful country with such a rich history. So as someone who, who loves his history, I was walking you know, around the place just admiring and under, trying to understand what I was seeing. I, my, my strongest impression was that the people of Turkey love democracy, want democracy, and want to see it acted upon. And for any country to have an 85% turnout in an election, it's an extraordinary thing. And you saw the passion that the people had for the democracy. I mean, one of the most striking things was the number of people who were evidently disabled, perhaps struggled to walk or blind, who made the effort to get to the polls. Mm -hmm. and, and it was it was poignant to see, but you, you saw how their family members and friends were supporting them and getting there. And it, you could see how much voting meant for the people. And I have to, to praise the Turkish authorities that the, the actual systems that they had for administering the elections and counting the votes were absolutely fantastic. And mm -hmm. the president of the Supreme Election Council said to me right at the start, you know, Andrew, we have one of the best systems in Europe. In fact, the whole of Europe should adopt it. I mean, they divided their electorate into voters lists of about 350, which is a very, very small number. But what that meant was they were able to administer the four elections they were conducting simultaneously. When the polls closed, they counted the uh, ballots straight afterwards, and then they were able to report at ballot box level the results within about an hour and a half, two hours. So the polls closed at five o'clock. By seven o'clock in the evening, you were beginning to see the picture emerging how people voted. And that was absolutely, truly impressive. However, there's much more to democracy than simply counting votes. And what we saw, what I saw personally was, well, there were many things that concerned me. The first thing, I landed in Ankara, and virtually every lamppost you saw had a, had a picture of the president. You saw very little evidence of the opposition parties. All you saw was President Erdogan's image everywhere you went. And to my eyes, you, you would be looking for, for evidence that every political party had a fair chance and, and was competing for the same space. And I didn't get that impression. Um, I was fortunate enough to have a little bit of time to watch Turkish media, uh, on albeit the English language version, obviously, of the Turkish media. And again, what struck me was that it, there was no level playing field. What you were seeing was a party political broadcast on behalf of the ruling party, mm -hmm. the ruling party's coalition. And you thought, this, this is strange, this is odd. And also, you saw rhetoric, very, very strong rhetoric, using terrorism and words like terrorism, linking political candidates from different parties with terrorists and terrorism generally. Now, I fully understand Turkey, Turkey's special security situation. Don't get me wrong, you know, they have grave concerns and they must protect themselves and deal with terrorism their own way. But it was evident that the language was intemperate, the language was very, very strong, and it created a climate of tension and fear. Now, coupled with that, Turkey was, is undergoing difficult economic times. It was in, in, in March, it certainly was in June as well. Uh, and there were a lot of tensions on the streets. And when we went around doing our election um, observations, mm -hmm. there were places where the police said to us, um, we can't go in there just yet, we need more security personnel to protect you. And in another situation, we were going to see votes counted in Ankara at one particular polling station. The police said to us, we don't think it's safe that you stay here. We would like you to move somewhere else. Um, now, both of those situations are unusual. Of course, you take police advice. You're not going to ignore the police's advice, and, and we did it. But it was very, very evident, not just with those examples, but the way that people would interact with us, that there was a lot of tension. There was a lot at stake in these elections. And of course, the president himself had ramped them up as being effectively a referendum on his rule. And what happened in March was roughly a 50-50 split. Uh, and notwithstanding the fact that there wasn't an apparent level playing field, there wasn't uh, what I would understand as media plurality, etc., the vote was pretty evenly split. So all parties could walk away from the March election saying, 
they had had some form of victory. Uh, when you compare with the second election, it was focusing much more on Istanbul, we know that. Oh, very much But so. it's, uh, when you compare, and do you have different observations or any evaluation or different strategy in this, uh, in this context? When, when we went first in, in March, we had a, a team of 22 from 20 different uh, Council of Europe member okay. states. When we went back in June, there were 14 of us. Now, obviously, uh, a country the size of, of Turkey, whether it's a team of 22 or a team of 14, uh, you're never going to get everywhere. Uh, but obviously, uh, we, we divide into teams of two, as I'm, I'm sure you realize. So we would have in Istanbul, there were seven teams around Istanbul um, on the 23rd of June. Uh, when it was in March, if, I, if memory serves, I think we had two teams um, in Istanbul in and around the, the area. So we were able to concentrate more. Mm -hmm. um, but as you know, Istanbul is the, the biggest concentrated urban center in Europe. You know, uh, absolutely fascinating place with uh, different types of communities and different locations. Th uh, throughout Ist Istanbul and I was very fortunate because uh, when I was in Istanbul I did it in March, I was in Ankara, but in, in June I was in Istanbul. I, I was in and around the Besiktas area, uh, and I had the joy of seeing Hagia Sophia and seeing a lot of the historical sites, which were of tremendous interest to me. But also I, I had the, the fortune to be in Taksim Square and to be able to walk down uh, Taksim Street and look going to polling stations off. Uh, and that was fascinating to actually see real Turkish life and to see people going about their ordinary business and, and you know there's the main street you're walking off uh, to go and find the polling stations and that for me that was absolutely fascinating. Uh, while we were talking on Istanbul elections it's also important to highlight that the mayor of Istanbul Ekrem Imamoğlu were also uh, in in your debate so did That's you have right. a, did you have a chance to discuss with him personally before the debate or after uh, what, what, you, what, what could you say about his reactions? Well as, as in all these things. When, whenever, off the record. Uh, well, <laughs> As in all of these things, you only get a chance to have about three or four minutes conversation if you're lucky. What I, what I was very pleased with um, was obviously our report is very, very detailed. It go, goes in in some detail to Mr. Imamoglu's first election being annulled and then the, the circumstances in which uh, the, his second election came about. Um, I was, I, I was delighted to hear him endorse everything that we wrote in the report, that he actually said everything in the report is correct. Uh, because, the, as you could understand, the, the Turkish delegation uh, was split as to those who supported what we had said and those who, understandably, for their own reasons, would be critical of what we had said. Mm -hmm. um, we have tried to produce a very fair and balanced report strength, you know, actually saying just how strong the underlying principles for democracy are in Turkey, but yet at the same time saying there are these problems. And Mr. Imamoglu himself, when he addressed Congress, dealt with this as well, and he was actually saying and he saw his re-election. I mean, he was elected with 30,000 vote majority first time around. Through challenges in the courts originally, that 30,000 was whittled down to 13,000. Um, and then uh, for technical reasons, the Supreme Election Council annulled the election because they said 754 ballot box committees were not chaired by civil servants at the chairman level and the, the deputy chairman level. Now, as the, the report says, I don't find that reasoning intellectually satisfying and a lot of commentators have criticised it. There were four elections that were run in Istanbul at the same time, but only the one election was annulled. The Supreme Election Council said, well, they only had a complaint about the, the mayoral, morality and what have you, and not the other elections. I'm yet to understand how having a non-civil servant chairman and deputy chairman, with all the other checks and precautions that are in place, could in any way affect the votes that had been cast and had been counted. But nonetheless, the uh, Supreme Election Council annulled the vote. But what happened? Well, whether you take the 30,000 majority or the reduced 13,000 majority, the electorate subsequently gave Mr. Imamoglu an 800,000 mm -hmm. uh, majority. Now, this is something I've seen elsewhere in Europe, and particularly in the United Kingdom, uh, obviously where I'm from, where the electorate tend not to like elections being annulled or changed at the courts. Um, and it's typically the case that if the electorate think the courts have done the wrong thing, that the result will rebound. And I'm, I suspect there's more than a little element of that where, you know, a, a very small majority is converted into an overwhelming majority, you know, with an electorate of about 11 million people. To have a majority of 800,000 is truly impressive. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Rapporteur. Thank you very much. Thank you.